Let's switch gears here. This is a satellite image of Africa, and this is the Central Sahara Desert. And unfortunately, it turns out that the countries that have the highest population growth rate are all here in the Central Sahara Desert. Where it looks dry, it is dry. And this area right here is part of Chad. Chad happens to be one of the poorest nations in the world and also has a high, relatively high population growth rate. So the question that I ask, estimate what do you think the net annual population growth rate is in percent of Chad or Mali, Niger, a lot of these countries here in the Central Sahara Desert. So think for a moment what you think the net annual population growth rate is in percent. You might want to pause uh, and as soon as you have your answer then continue. A typical answer that I get when asking people this question and I've asked many people this question is around 10%, 7%, something like that. Let's not exaggerate it, so let's go with 7%, for instance. That's, that's a very typical answer. The population of Chad is now about 10 million. So to get the population next year, it would be equal to the cell above it. This is an Excel times, if it's a 7% population growth rate, 1.07. If we copy this down, then we can see that in just 10 years, approximately, the population would double. Now, what seems like very innocuous of it, with a 7% population growth rate, there's no gimmick here. You're simply multiplying this number times 1.07 and this number times 1.07 and so forth. In just 10 years, the population of Chad doubles. And so now the question is, can Chad's can Chad sustain a population growth rate that would have their population double in just 10 years? More importantly, grow by a factor of four in approximately 20 years and grow by a factor of eight in just 30 years. That means that they would need in 30 years eight times as much food, water, education, health care, it seems unlikely that they can sustain that. Here's information, this is actually on Wikipedia, but it's information that comes from the CIA World Factbook about Chad. You can see the population is a little more than 10 million, and the current population growth rate is almost 3%. If we come back here and change this to 1.03, the actual population growth rate, fortunately, it's not nearly as high. But when will the population double? The population will double in around 25 years, meaning the population will grow by a factor of four in about 50 years and grow by a factor of eight in 70 years, grow by a factor of 10 in 78 years. Can Chad sustain a population growth rate of 3%, where in the next 78 years, the population would grow by a factor of 10? It seems unlikely that they could sustain that. Here we are in Google Earth. Let's travel to Chad and see what's going on. There must be some crisis looming in Chad. And as we can see, it's the crisis in Darfur. Here's the border between Chad and the Sudan. And if we zoom in a little bit, here we can see a swollen riverbed where refugees are trying to get across the river. Here is a group Doctors Without Borders. Dr. Paul Farmer is one of the leaders of that, helping young, here's a young Sudanese girl. Here's a burning village. 
so many of the villages in this area have been completely burned out and then the wells poisoned through violence from one tribe to another. If the population growth rate of Chad is around 3% and there must be some crisis looming there because the population is growing so quickly as we've demonstrated then if we could look at a map and here is one in Wikipedia that takes all of the countries listed by population growth rate and if you look at the top you can see that all of the countries are either in Africa or the Middle East and most of them are in Africa and if you want to look at it in a map form you can see that anything in yellow and then green are hot spots and here's Chad, Liberia and so forth, Madagascar, Central Republic of Congo. It would be important for us when establishing policy, world policy, to have an understanding that there must be crises looming in these areas where the population growth rate is so high. Even if it seems like it's low at two and a half or three percent, these are extremely high. So we would ask ourselves, what about these spots in the world? If we are not proactive, there will be a crisis looming. Maybe we should be more proactive. Here's one of the most interesting sites I've seen in a long time. It's called the Gapminder, gapminder.org. And if you click here, you can investigate a lot of the relationships in the world through a graphical interface. Here we have income per person on this axis and life expectancy on this axis. Each circle represents a country. Its radius represents its population. So you can see that that's China and the United States and India. Each region of the world is represented by color and this is a picture for 2005 so we can pull it back to what it was like in 1950 and play this animation We can put together a number of the ideas that I've already shown that the income per person in these countries in Africa, Niger is right next to Chad, is very low and their life expectancy is also very low. And what happened is that a lot of the countries were mixed down in here. For instance, China was there. But ch watch how China and India chased the United States as we go from 1950 to 2005. Here we're at 1980, 2000, and so forth. Unfortunately, India ends up here, China ends up here with their income per person going way up, their life expectancy going way up, chasing the United States, but unfortunately the countries of Africa are left with relatively low incomes and life expectancies. There are hundreds of examples that can be shown in Gapminder. This is just one. I highly recommend if you want to understand the trends in the world that you come here. Note that you can pick on each axis any of these variables. And you can do any of these variables versus the same variables down here.